Hello everyone, welcome to video 2 of this series on how to use the TI Inspire for Maths HL Paper 2. Today we will focus on the topic of numbers and algebra, and don't forget to check out my last video on the topic of functions. Even though complex numbers are a part of this topic, I will make a separate video on those because there are a lot of useful calculator skills and I don't want to make this video too long. So without further ado, let's get started. First, we will start with useful settings for examining series and sequences. So let's start by seeing how to find the terms of a sequence. And to do this, we go to menu, statistics, and list operations, and number five, sequence. Once we're here, we have to input um, the expression for the general term of the sequence. So let's put 2n minus 1. Then we do comma, and we have to define the variable that expresses the number term of the sequence, which in this case would be n. Then we put comma again, and we put um, the lowest value we want n to take. So let's say 1 in this case, and then comma again, and then the maximum value, let's say 5. Now, once you have your sequence, it would be useful to store it as a list so you can name it and then refer back to it um, in later operations. So to do this, you use this symbol over here. Um, so you would do control this button right here. And um, let's say we want to name this sequence sequence one. Um, and we'll make it equal to the answer. So now if we want to refer back to the sequence, all we have to do is write sequence one. Once you've stored this sequence as a list, there are a lot of useful um, settings that the calculator has to analyze um, this list. So let's go to menu, statistics, and list math. And you can find um, the minimum of the list, so the lowest number in the list, the maximum number in the list, the mean of the list, the median of the list, the sum of all the elements, the product of all the elements, obviously. And you can also find um, some statistics values like standard deviation. So for example, let's do the sum of the elements. You would just have to write sequence one and press enter. Or you could do the product, the mean, or the median. If you go to menu, statistics, and list operations, you can also sort the list in ascending or descending order. Although I'm not sure how useful this would be, but it's good to know how to do it anyways. Now let's go to the topic of combinations and permutations. First, let's see how to input the factorial sign, which we can do with this button right here, like so. And then to input a combination, you go to menu, probability, combination, and then you put the total number of objects in the set and comma and the number of objects you want to choose from that set. And then for permutations, it's really similar. You go to menu again, probability, and then permutations. And again, the total number of objects in the set and then the number of objects you want to choose from that set. And the final setting we're going to see is how to solve a system of linear equations which you can do by going to menu, algebra, and then number two, solve system of linear equations. Then you would input the number of equations in the system, let's say three, and the number of variables in the system, let's say three again. Then you just input the equations in terms of these variables over here. And there you go. I hope this video was useful and the next one will be either on complex numbers or on calculus. Bye!